Joining me now to discuss, Democratic member of the House Intelligence Committee, Raja Krishnamoorthy. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Biana. So at this point, we've come to realize that whatever the president may be telegraphing really should be taken seriously. So in that light, what do you make of this possible change of protocol? I think it's very disturbing. It would continue a pattern of potentially disturbing behavior. Uh, recently, after the president had uh, a one-on-one -on -one meeting in person with Vladimir Putin, he had the notes of, the, of that particular meeting confiscated and potentially destroyed. Um, now, uh, what he's suggesting that uh, would happen with regard to a call with a foreign leader is that those notes would not be even taken in the first instance. And this is problematic uh, because um, from a counterintelligence standpoint, if a foreign government knows what's said on those calls, and we don't know what's said, or the American public doesn't know what's said on those calls, what is said could be used against the president and be right. used as leverage. That's called compromise. We've learned a lot about what compromise means over the past few years. But what strikes me, and I'm glad you make this point, because what strikes me about these calls is that they're monitored to actually protect the president as well as obviously U.S. Right. national interests. I mean, they're highly coordinated. They include uh, typically dozens of officials. As a member of the Intel Committee, what does it tell you when the president seemingly wants to conduct foreign policy in secret? Well, I think that it, it begs the question, why? What does he want to say on those calls uh, that he doesn't want other people to listen in on? Uh, that's the first point. And then secondly, it basically opens up the po possibility that separate back channels are created, uh, such as with Rudy Giuliani and others, where we have a shadow foreign policy, which operates not in the best interest of the United States, but in the best interest of potentially Rudy Giuliani's clients, uh, including uh, Donald Trump in his political or personal uh, capacity, as well as others uh, who we don't even know. Right. I mean, you have the president just uh, yesterday uh, finally admitting that he did send Rudy Giuliani over to right. Ukraine after saying that that wasn't right. the case. But it also seems to be an effort at avoiding another whistleblower coming forward, right, or, or another Lieutenant Colonel Vindman from sounding the alarm when they hear something that doesn't follow protocol. That's exactly right. I think that he's, um, you know, uh, apparently trying to shield uh, his conversations from uh, the possibility that others might come forward and expose wrongdoing associated with those conversations. I think that it's a good thing for more people to be listening in. And also, um, not only does it help to uh, potentially expose wrongdoing or to deter the president from engaging in wrongdoing, but it's really essential for coordinating our national um, security as well as diplomatic policy and even defense policy. It's really important that other parts of the government know what the president has said or maybe even agreed to in these calls and then to follow up accordingly. Uh, now, if they're in the dark, it just makes them less effective. Yeah, and very complicated as well. Let me get you to weigh in on what we just discussed with the previous panel, and that's the president's latest apparent quid pro quo, this time via tweet uh, directed at the governor of New York. This is something that impeachment managers warned would happen. Uh, let me play for you what Hakeem Jeffries said just two weeks ago. Grants allocated to cities or towns or municipalities across the country. But the president could say, you're not going to get that money, Mr. Mayor, Mrs. County Executive, Mrs. Town Supervisor, unless you endorse me for re-election. The president could say that to any governor of our 50 states. That's unacceptable. That cannot be allowed to happen in our democratic republic. Well, the president appears to have done just that. I'm not even sure the impeachment managers would have expected this to play out as quickly uh, and so quickly post acquittal. Right. Do, do you think that this falls into the category of an article of impeachment, as Shan Wu sort of alluded to as well, at least as, as obstruction uh, of justice or Congress? And if so, what should be done about it? Because it likely could continue to happen again. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but what I am sure about is that we have to be much more vigilant in our oversight role. Uh, I'll just give you an example. I think that, um, you know, uh, 
the Homeland Security Secretary, when he comes uh, before Congress or she comes before Congress or uh, their deputies, they are always asking for either more resources, authorization for new programs or modifications to existing ones. And at this point, I think we have to be uh, much more vigilant with, re with regard to answering or um, accepting their requests um, in light of what you just talked about with regard to Governor Cuomo. I mean, we basically have to start to um, condition uh, our um, granting of these additional resources or uh, the modifications based on good behavior. And uh, unfortunately, the White House is not showing that. And now I think we're going to have to be much more aggressive in our oversight. And I should just correct myself. Obviously, I was referring to abuse of power and not obstruction of Congress, but it's interesting to, to get your perspective on that as well. Congressman Krishnamurthy, thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Brianna.